Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, back to another episode of the Nine Hope Podcast with David and Ian. David, what's going on, brother? Another Friday. I uh, love this is my favorite day of the week. I love it. Probably, yeah. Probably everyone. This is a good one. This is a good one. Yeah, Fridays are good, dude. Well, you, back when I was I, playing. Uh, well, oh, back when we were playing, probably like it didn't matter. It's like now, but you're in the real world. Fridays, like. Oh shit! I got the days get blended together when you're playing yeah. baseball, bro. So like every day is kind of a Friday. Now, uh, yeah, Fridays are huge, bro. Fridays are huge. So I hit the range today already, a little bit. And as I texted it to you, I had it. I bought a big bucket of balls for thirteen bucks, and I had it for the first twenty percent, bro. First twenty percent, I had it. I was just stroking nice. You know what I mean, like. We trying Whatever. to change something? What 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 happened? I started just thinking. I I think, bro. And I I started getting, dude. I I like progressed. So I went from the fifty six to the A to the P. It's good to the nine. I got to the nine, and I started. Ooh, ooh, we we lost it. Then I went to the seven. Hit a couple good. He go. See, I skip I, all of them. I skip like so. I'll start with a pitching wedge, and then I skip. Uh, my nine. Go to my eight. And then I skip my seven, go to my six, mm. and then go to my four, and then hybrid three wood driver. Smart, smart, bro. But, so I got to change it up. I know my process is a little messed up, but I'm really trying to get into this golf thing and get good at it. And that's uh, it's really frustrating because I can't, bro. But we, uh, it is Friday, so it's a win, and there uh, there has been some baseball played. There's some good baseball going on around the league, um, so. I mean, just highlighting a couple stories that that happened this week, bro, off the rip. Francisco Lindor coming off uh, the bench. I guess he had the, you know, the flu or stomach bug or the stomach flu, however you want to say it. But he was out. They were playing the Cubs. Um, They were playing in New York. And so he sat the bench and he ends up coming off the bench in a big spot, getting two at bats, four RBIs and a walk off man uh, to lift. The Mets over the Cubs, dude. Were you able to check any of that out, bro? What's what's your take on that? And uh, have you ever missed a game for being sick? I think it's different for a pitcher. Um, you guys play every single day. And I don't know if an everyday position player, like everyday shortstop, everyday center fielder, whatever, gets enough credit because it's a 162-game season and you get like one off day a month. But you got to think, like, that's – so much on your body and whatever you want to say but as a pitcher like i was pitching every five days every three days like so no i never did but i wasn't in there every day yeah um and Lindor honestly is my has been is my favorite player in major league baseball really yeah really i love him i love the way he carries himself huh yeah he just plays well he's always happy i think he seems like a good clubhouse guy puerto rican dude um there's like some new balance when he signed with them, he went to like Japan and was trying <laughs> this weird food and stuff over there. And I don't know. He just seems like a good dude. Yeah, dude. That's uh, uh, I did not know that he was your favorite player, bro. So I remember that I missed a game for being sick in 2018. We were in Vegas and I remember I was feeling kind of crappy. I did not go out the night before. Like mm-hmm. I just whatever. I had an upper respiratory infection, went and saw a doctor, got on antibiotics, and I was out that game. I sat that game. And I remember I was talking to Jason Worth a little bit. He was there. And uh, we were potentially going to, like, retaliate and hitting somebody. I wasn't really aware of it. I also didn't know that I was the one that got hit. So they were retaliating for some reason. Like I had, I was just oblivious to the fact. So Protecting you. I remember I'm sitting, like, I'm sick. And I'm sitting like on the couch in the game. I'm not going to go home. I'm going to like ride it out with my boys. You know what I mean? Uh, he comes in. He's like, yo, we need you on the bench. We need you on the bench. I'm like, all right. And I go out there. And uh, it was I, because if there was like a bench clearing like incident, they didn't want to be down a guy. They didn't want to yeah. be down a guy, dude. So I remember being out there. I think we ended up hitting somebody. But the like, benches <laughs> didn't clear. Yeah, dude, the benches didn't clear. So I didn't have to worry about it. But I remember jason worth talking to me about never missing a game if like he is able to 
because he told me this story of it was he was going into his contract year and he was with the Phillies or he was going into like this big year. Yeah, he was right before he got a big contract and he had like a hernia thing, like a sports hernia thing. And he was going to go into, I think it was Charlie Manuel's office and request a day off, like just so he could get right. And somebody was in there hurt already requesting a day off and he left and worth was going in as he was coming out I, like i'm kind of i kind of yeah, forgetting yeah. the whole just but he said like oh he'll never play for me again because he just pulled himself like and so worth was like i'm okay how are you he was just like uh just forget it charlie yeah. was like hey wh what's up he's like ah, forget it forget it forget it and then from that moment on, I remember uh, worth saying like he started getting fucking hot, like he started banging and then he ended up having like the year of his career and it set him up to getting paid. Like I am I am not that I'm paraphrasing, but I know I am misspeaking a little bit. Maybe we turning is a big deal. Maybe eventually moving forward, we get J-Dub to come on and tell it. That would be sick. Yeah. But like I remember him telling me that story. Yeah, it's serious. And then I think he got surgery in the off season like following it and it all ended up being okay but he fucking banged that year and he ended up getting paid and it's like it's crazy how everything ends well, i don't up think like i don't think like the average fan or something realizes like what a veteran like that brings to a clubhouse or a triple a team or a big league team whatever like him going and grabbing you like when you're on like your deathbed sick like hey i don't care like come out here and be present with the team if shit pops off yes like, dude yes dude that impacted you in your career probably more than you even realize or in triple like, a he was like that yeah so like guys don't realize and that's what kept me around i wasn't like on that level but you know you do the right things you carry yourself the right way you grind it out like you're gonna have a spot and hell yeah i don't want kids to play through like injury but too many kids nowadays i feel like are like my arms are a little sore or my legs are sore i'm like yeah, so everyone else is, but it's like, can you day in, day out, you know, grind it out? And I think that's awesome what he was able to do. Yeah, dude, I, I, I agree, man. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to be able to tie into that. So it's uh, sick to see Francisco Lindor come up off the bench in a big spot, come through for his team. And he said he was potentially going to take a dump or throw up at shortstop. Uh, like, because that's how sick he was, bro. So that's pretty cool, man. That's cool to see. I love that. Um, we got another story. So talking about, you know, the Orioles have been hot. The Orioles had like, I think it was a, what, 101 game uh, winning game season last year. So they were, yeah. they were hot. And so a big part of that um, was Ryan O'Hearn. And so O'Hearn was in like parts of five seasons, I believe it was um, kind of like a bench player platoon, platoon guy. Uh, with the Kansas City Royals, he ended up getting DFA'd after like a, you know, a tough season, and then he got picked up, traded over to the Orioles. Uh, from what I was reading, like he he started in AAA, and then they promoted him, and he fucking banged, bro. And so with all the metrics and like the crazy analytics out right now, they got him as the highest expected batting average, like moving forward. So like they they rate the amount of hard hit contacts that he have that he has like the, his plate discipline um, and how many times he gets the ball on the sweet spot. And so like his sweet spot fucking contact now is, I think it was like 41% or something like that. So like 41% of the time, like he's hitting the ball in the sweet spot. That's crazy as shit. And so like, he's got the highest weighted, uh, you know, batting average, I guess, moving forward or whatever that stat was. Right. And uh, dude, it's, it's like a, an understated, like it's, um, it's it's insane, bro. And so it kind of attributes a lot to the success of the Orioles, man. Kind of what they're doing. They're in first place. Um, was actually I'm looking at that division right now, and AL East is uh, it's pretty close. Yeah, dude, they're hot. AL East Baltimore, is hot. 2011, Yankees 20 and 13, Boston 18 14, Toronto 15 17, Tampa Bay 14 and 18. But like Tampa Bay is at the bottom of the totem pole there with 14 wins in the AL Central. The White Sox have six wins. Yeah, they're doing, look at the difference there. They're not doing well. No, that's really bad. 
So, it, you know, there, it's hot competition over there, right? AL yeah. East. Like, he's, he's doing that. That's what you want to see. For sure, bro. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so, with O'Hearn, like, so both a strong indicator of current and future offensive success. Um, expected weighted on base average is what we're talking about here. So it's X W O B A expected weighted on base average generally features some of baseball's best hitters at the top of the leaderboard. Last year's top five featured Aaron judge, Acuna, Jordan Alvarez, Shohei Otani and Corey Seager, bro. So those are some big names. 2022 judge Alvarez, Freddie Freeman, Juan Soto and Mike Trout. And so through the first month of the 2024 season, uh, he's doing it. He's fucking doing it, bro. Um, so like the big names are there: Otani, Soto, Mookie Betts, all top ten. The dude, this dude's leading it. This dude is leading it. He's hot, and it is expected to continue. So they're expecting him, like he supposedly with this stat, it's saying that he's one of the more unlucky players in the league with the shit he's already doing. Wow. They're saying like he is getting out more times with balls on the barrel and like sweet spot. Than anybody else so like he is insanely at like having bad luck so they're saying he's supposed to be like a, a dude moving forward like this stat is what's you know saying that that's it's a nine hole wild. success story right there that's wild bro yes yeah that, i love stories like that that's what i love about baseball in general or really athletics as a whole and i teach that too i work on more of the mental stuff with like the lessons i do probably more than like mechanical because kids will come in and say, well, I don't think I'm good at this and they're good at this. And I'm like, just flip that mindset. Yeah. Like they're always thinking of like the worst possible outcome when nothing bad has happened yet. And like, imagine going through life like that. Imagine trying to go talk to a girl and saying, well, what if she rejects me and, or going into a test and thinking I'm going to fail this thing. Like you gotta, to be successful, I think it's all mindset. And I bet Ryan O'Hearn here put in the work physically in the gym working on the swing but i also bet he was like i'm capable of doing this yeah why not gotta me? be gotta be bro 100 percent gotta be so that's cool to see uh obviously the orioles are hot they are hot they're hot right now dude um so we got i guess we can keep going a little bit we got paul yeah. skeens still in triple a like that's we don't really have anything new to report there other than like it's it's a travesty that he's still in AAA. So 41 strikeouts in 23 innings. What are we doing other than manipulating service time? Is that even is that even in play anymore? Like, do they have have they had them down long enough? I don't know. I think it's more like this is his first real year in professional baseball. I mean, look what happened to uh, Holiday. I mean, I know he doesn't. He's not a college kid. Yeah. But what happens if Skeens gets called up? And I think he's going to have success. I think he's going to do well. But what if he just gets, what if he doesn't? And they go, hey, we rushed him too much and he wasn't ready and we, we should have given him a full year under his belt to see what he could do. Yeah. Whatever, you know. Um, That's hard. And I mean, they got that Jared Jones guy that we talked about last week that he said he's, he saw his wiener in his pants, whatever. <laughs> that dude's that's right. lights out kind of out of nowhere, striking out the world. It's like a, Pirates are still, I don't know, competing, I guess. But that's another thing that's hard, too, is, like, Skeens is going to pitch every five days. And you bring a guy up like that. I mean, he's the most touted pitching prospect probably since Strasburg. Yeah, bro. But does one guy change your season? Probably not. Maybe not a – maybe a shortstop or – Yeah, know, but guy not or something. one every yeah. five days, right? They're, I think they're looking at the – his career and i mean he's got he's got money in the bank he signed for a lot of money he's got all the talent in the world i don't know i'm on the fence about like why not put this guy in and see what, see he, what he can do or also like hey let's develop him a little bit like maybe they need him to throw a certain amount of change-ups a game and work on certain pitches like we don't know all the details that go into that for sure yeah 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 it makes sense dude i just see him you know Pumping fuzz, striking dudes out. It's yeah, tough really because Pirates are sitting last in the NL Central, bro. So, like, they yeah. started out hot. Seems like they're fizzling, dude. They're, I mean, they're they're behind St. Louis. Dude, I bet by All-Star break, he's 
He's think so? Yeah. Yeah. I think if he keeps doing it, I mean, he's only got, he's doubling his Ks per inning. I mean, that doesn't, Triple A is not a joke. Like people don't realize that either. I don't think is like Triple A is a high level of baseball. For sure. If you're yeah. doing well in Triple A, you're probably going to do well in the big leagues. I agree. I I, f- I feel that, bro. And he's yeah, not just doing right. well. He's absolutely jump dominating. Yeah, yeah, dude. Um. So we got we'll we got uh, Mike Trout. I mean, Mike yeah, that's, Trout. I, that story makes me again. sad. He's out again, bro. He is out again. You know, he has a, no idea when he tore it. So it's yes, meniscus. Left he meniscus, played. bro. I was, he I was, played on it. Which is crazy, right? He says like he, he was just feeling it sort of like, like tighten up a little bit when he would sit down. And then he would get up off the bench and it is, you know, getting tight, getting sore. Uh, next day he gets an MRI and it looks like he's got a torn meniscus in his left knee, dude. So... It, this is going to be the fourth time in the last five seasons that he has not played past 82 games. That's really hampering his stock. Everything, I mean, dude. Hall of Fame, unanimous Hall of Fame decision, you know, like all of it. And he works hard. I think he's a good dude. I think he's close to, if not the best player that, that in the past 15 years, you know. Otani now is coming up a little bit, but. And at his age, like coming, this is from my orthopedic days, but you can repair a meniscus or you can just shave it out. And I don't know with him being like, he's 30 years old, right? Dude, no, he's going to be 33. 33? He's going to be 33 in August. And so, dude, the, the Angels have six more years of him on contract, bro. So it's like, okay, this guy's made a glass. It's crazy to say that because he's one of the best, like, baseball players ever. Uh, yeah. But... Yeah, uh, it's man, it's it's wild because you think we've always said uh, he's one of the best. Pl- he's absolutely one of the best. What happens now with his Hall of Fame stuff? I don't even know how to say that the right way because whenever you think of Mike Trout, you think of a unanimous Hall of Famer, bro. Like yeah, first ballot, three MVPs, MVP junior. Yeah, dude. And then now it's like, bro, I, man, or I haven't seen Mike Trout play in a while. I feel like. He was, dude, he was leading. Uh, he was playing MLB, well. Ten home runs. Yeah, yeah. Ten home runs, bro. He was hitting the ball well. Um, still defensively amazing. But you think the Angels kind of, he comes back from this, maybe he's DHing a lot more. You know, like yeah. they got to protect that investment. And But you look at like King Griffey Jr.'s career too. He was not always healthy. Yeah. He was, in, he was injured quite a bit. Um, so I don't know how much this hampers him, but it's sad to see. I like him a lot. I'm a big fan of his. Yeah, dude. It's it. So the last year's situation was pretty interesting with having two of the best players in baseball, Mike Trout being hurt for a good amount. But you have Shohei Otani and Mike Trout, the GM of the Mariners or the president, you know, whatever the Mariners or the, excuse me, the Angels front office goes and then, you know, builds up the roster and everything signs a bunch of people to try to make it competitive so that Shohei Otani will then stay. They end up like dumping all of that, uh, dump, losing out on that cash. And now it's like you lost out on Shohei Otani. Now you are left with Mike Trout, who is fragile, who is broken, who is probably, you know, he was running, he was running well. I mean, he had as many stolen bases as he had last year already, but it's dude. I mean, what do you have now? You can't build around this dude moving forward. I mean, look, dude. Look at the West. Look at West Coast baseball right now. Those, every, you know, people are fucking nasty out that way. Yeah, he's not twenty three. Yeah, you got super teams, dude. I don't even know what this means for his like trade stock. Bad. Who knows? Yeah, no, it's it's sad. Like I, that's what I said when we first started talking about this. I, I'm a big Mike Trout fan. I think what he's done for the game um, has almost been Ken Giffey Jr. like. Like, got kids back involved in it. Yeah. He had his own shoes. You know, all the kids want to wear the trouts and the turfs, and you don't see him getting in trouble. You don't see him doing stupid stuff. Never. Um, I, I think he's got like a contract with Body Armor, but other than that, like, I don't see him on commercials. I don't see him need to be in the limelight. He values being a father. He values being a husband, a teammate. I think he does all the little things right, and I guarantee you, he works hard. Yeah, but his body's just, you know, deteriorating a little bit. 
It's not easy playing 162 games. I should state that earlier. It's not easy. And you're seeing that now. For sure. For sure, dude. For sure. It's going to be uh, crazy. You know, I, we'll, we'll, we'll keep the eyes peeled on how the Angels move forward with this situation. But, you know, wishing the best of Mike Trout. I like Mike Trout as well. I agree with everything you're saying, dude. Uh, Stephen A. Smith was <laughs> giving funny. Mike Trout a little bit of backlash, dude. If uh, do you, What was Stephen A. Smith saying, dude? And then I heard Jonathan Papelbon was coming out and calling Stephen A. a racist. I was not able to watch those videos or catch up on that stuff too much, man. I just I heard that there was a lot of backlash on Stephen A. for some of the shit that he said, and I don't know. Well, Stephen A's always been controversial, always spoke his mind, you know, but he quoted and stated that he did not understand why a player like Mike Trout gets hurt so much in a non-contact sport. And I think that mm. to me just solidifies how little he knows about baseball. You know, baseball is still an explosive sport. A guy like Mike Trout is an explosive athlete. Like your knees, your elbows, like they're taking a beating, your core. Um, so yeah, he he said that. And Papelbon, who is still probably insane, you know, jumped in and just it was kind of Papelbon esque and just <laughs> tossed out the racist word, which is maybe a little harsh there. It but... went it went from zero to a hundred quickly. Remember Papelbon there. choking. Uh, Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper. <laughs> yes, dude. Choke him. Th- that should tell you kind of everything you know need to know about Pat Bud. For sure, bro. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, he just I think that's clickbait or that's you know, Stephen A. Smith's got a job to do, he's gotta make money, and he probably saw an opportunity to know something is bad press and he's just speaking his mind, but I, he doesn't know anything about it. From Mike Trout hurting his knee to the race card being played. You know what I mean? Like racist stuff being played. It's... Yeah, that's just him like speaking his mind and then Papa Bell going, oh yeah, well you're racist. It's wild. Dude, that's wild. A lot uh, weird world we live in now, man. Very weird, bro. Um, there was this, there was another story. So, Bu- Buchanan High School and uh, Troy Gloss. So, Troy Gloss was obviously uh, you know, an, an MLB stud. Um, uh, yeah. took over took over as the head coach of the a best. program dude can you can you uh elaborate a little on the story yeah so I what i've read about it i didn't get to listen to all of bernsey's kind of rant but his rant was for good reason he took over a program with a very young core mm. there was like one senior a bunch of young guys um a very good team in the past kind of like a powerhouse and they start off really bad. But Troy Gloss had invested. He uprooted his family, saw an opportunity to go help kids, invested like $30,000 of his own money into this program. Like some powerhouse baseball program like this didn't even have like usable baseballs. And so long story short, he's doing the right things. He's a solidified stud of Major League Baseball. It's a lot to teach. Invest his own money, uproot his family. They start off not very good. They cut ties with him. Said, hey, we're going to go a different route. That's the story that I read. Who knows if there's more to it? But like, this isn't, this isn't college. Right? Like, this is a high school program. And I don't know why there's such an emphasis on winning. Like, you're a college guy getting paid. 80 grand a year, something like that at a, at a D2, you got to win. If you're a D1 guy getting paid 700 to a million dollars a year at like a LSU or something, or a couple million dollars at LSU, you got to win. This was a high school program. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's more to it than that. But what I'm from, what I'm reading sounds like he was doing all the right things and, yeah, they had There's an one senior starter, issue. one senior starter, five juniors, one sophomore, and two freshmen. Got you. Yeah, so yeah. they're young. It's a young team, dude. I guess they were nine and was, fourteen. There was uh, an interdisciplinary issue. Somebody got in trouble at school. 
I think it was four kids. And so he sat them for one game um, because of an issue. And I guess some of the parents had also like complained. And so they had it. Ended up parting ways with him, bro. It's absolutely crazy. And that crazy. to me right there is going to teach those boys more about the world and their character. And that's something I would do. Like, hey, you're not following my rules. I'm the head coach. Like, you're not going to play. Um, In today's world, I feel like with instant gratification and social media and everything at our fingertips, like, kids today are different. Parents are different. And I, you know, I don't want to call my children. You know, if I see a kid fall down, I want to say, get back up. I want to be there to help them if they're actually hurt. But For sure. I, want to, I want to see kids get up on their own, you know, get back in the box. I, I, I think that's an old school mentality, but I bet that's how Gloss was with these boys. And they're 9-14, and 20, 23 games into the season, not playing well. And instead of playing his you know best guys, he sat them to teach them a lesson. I don't think that's bad. And if I was a parent on that team, I'd be like, well done, sir. And now what's what's the lesson? The parents the parents then go complain to the principal or the school board. And now what's that teaching them? And now Gloss is getting in trouble. Like, dude, what are we doing? What are you teaching the kids then? Like, hey, if you don't agree with something, go t- go tell on them. You know what I mean? Or I, I just think, Ben, it's that's crazy. That's crazy. Do you, think, do you think the kids like sacrificed a chicken or something and he had to sit Could them down? Be. Very, very much could have been, you know, that happened where that happened where I'm from Valley Center High School, just outside of Wichita. They were 0 and 8. Dude. Yeah. So just came uh, out a high school baseball team in Kansas. This is this is insanely. This is mind blowing, bro, is under criminal investigation after police said that they killed a chicken on their baseball field. So they sacrificed a chicken after not starting hot, right? They were struggling a little bit. Um, conf- the police department confirmed that a chicken was killed on the baseball diamond at Valley Center High School. There may have been some blood sprinkled on home plate from said chicken. And so now they are under criminal investigation. The program has been shut down, suspended until further notice, right? I guess they're done for the season, yeah, no, bro. No season. They're supposed to be in a tournament. Last weekend, I went and watched my little cousin pitch at Riverfront Stadium, which is like the double A for the Twins. Beautiful stadium. They weren't, they couldn't even play in it because of this Dude, chicken incident. That is uh, crazy. So, confirmed chicken was killed on the baseball diamond. Uh, on Monday, the district sent a letter to the parents alerting them that the varsity baseball team season has been suspended because of an animal cruelty investigation. Um, police are investigating the alleged crime as animal cruelty with malicious torture or killing, which is a felony in Kansas, bro. Fuck. That's not good. You know, for sure that like probably like 15 of these kids were all about it. And then like one kid walked home that night, got home with like just a white face of like horror. And his mom's what like, what just happened? What did I yeah, just Yeah. Billy, what happened, man? He's like, I don't even know where to begin. And, that one kid i mean it's i don't even know how to say this but it's, it's horrible like for for context like the movie major league joe boo talks about sacrificing a chicken and it's this weird it's this weird kind of like folklore around it like it's been you always hear that like oh you're in a slump we gotta sacrifice a chicken yeah you know you gotta whatever it's a it's a thing but not people don't actually do it well and these, these guys, guys did it, it. They yeah, beat the kids. shit out of a chicken. Yeah. So and Valley uh, Center is like kind of like a smaller town, uh, podunk kind of country boys. So chickens would probably be out that way. Yeah. So it's like one of these one of these kids probably had chickens on their farm and we just grabbed one that probably pissed them off and. Oh no! Yeah. Beat the shit out of it. So I guess they beat it with a bunch of baseball bats and then took the took the head off or something like that. Yeah. Whatever. So that's that's tough. And you know what's yeah. even harder for these boys, and I'm not trying to make light of this, but they don't even get to find out if it worked. <laughs> <laughs> huh? They did all that work, all this witchcraft. They don't even get to see if it paid off. These guys might get hit with felonies, dude, but the worst part, honestly, is like, man, 
did it work? We'll never yeah, know. You don't even know if you can come back from your 0 and 8 season. We'll never know. Imagine some of these kids are like committed to go to the next level. Dude, what I'm looking at Burns. Eric Burns right here in his like little office thing, and he's got a Joe Boo statue. That's where yeah, this yeah. all derives from. Like, yeah. Joe it's Boo crazy doing how it snake works, and bro. yeah. It's crazy how it works, man. So I mean yeah. messed up story. And again, not trying to make a lot of it. Today's world, that's gonna be really there's gonna be some repercussions from that. That's right. Uh very sad, but I don't know. They don't it's it's messed up. Yeah, rest in peace, dude. Rest in peace to the chicken. All the chickens out there, man. So we got David, this is this is where you shine here, bro, because you got the technology for it. So we got yeah, yeah. I got a clip of the week, right? Um, okay. We were talking about it last week where we thought we would try to find something that was pretty, like, extravagant, maybe cool. I don't know if it even, you know, it didn't have to do anything with sports. Maybe it does, but I saw something. So uh, the Milwaukee Bucks lost in the NBA playoffs. And so Patrick Beverly had had some words with a fan and they he was getting frustrated. I guess the <laughs> fan had a ball. I don't know how the I'm, fan got the ball, but Yeah, I'm watching it right now. Uh yeah, he he took the ball and threw it back at him and it, like it hit him. And it's really not a good look. It's not a good look on anybody's part, but it shows the frustration and it shows like the fans being able to get to the athletes, you know, it shows, it shows how much these Especially guys care. Especially there, like these, these fans are on top of you. Yeah, they, they are on top of you. Well, remember, uh, what was it Ron Artest, Pacers back in, we were like in middle school, I think. Him and uh, a couple other guys went into the crowd and just like beat the shit out of fans. Yes, bro, they threw down. That was bad. They threw down, bro. Yeah. Hey, you want to watch this video? I'd love to. I'd love to. Okay. So he's got the ball. He's got the ball. He's about to throw yep. it. He passes it. Oh, dude. And so obviously, like, Beverly's the bad guy here. Like, he's the bad guy here. Now look at the guy in the in the stands. Like, what did I do? What did I do? I didn't do anything. When this guy originally tossed the ball to Beverly or threw however you want to say it, passed it to him, threw it at him, gave it to him. What is a fan doing with a basketball? And then why is he – you know, throwing it towards Pat Bev. The only thing I can think of is like in a play, the ball just bounced into the crowd. They call a timeout or something. The guy's holding on to the ball. He's like, what do I do with this? He see, makes eye contact with Patrick, Patrick Beverly and he goes, hey man, here, here's your ball back. I don't know. It's tough, then, dude. It's tough right there. He's bro. pissed off and throws it at him and you, you can see him looking around for his lawyer yeah, and one dude in the in the cutoff NBA jersey with no shirt underneath. It's like trying to fight him. Yes, bro, <laughs> I saw that. That's a tough look too, man. With the uh, the, the full the full uni, I love that, bro. So that was my that was my clip of the week, man. It's bad. That guy's that's gonna a, get yeah, in a lot of big fine probably coming his way and some settlement to that fan. And who knows? That guy's guaranteed. And uh, we live in a weird world, man. But even if that guy's 100% okay, he's going to say, my thumb, my thumb is hurt. And it wasn't, that was a Pacers fan. Oh. So it's the opposite. Yeah, it's not good. It's yeah. It's not good. Who so knows? Like, that jammed my thumb. Um, the only thing I had to really contribute, you did a good job putting some stuff together, was the unfortunate chicken situation. That's tough, yeah. The, the chicken story was probably... The most exciting one of the day. I I loved it, bro. I loved it. We'll have to. I'll, I'll try to dig a little bit more into the chicken story, so they're they're gonna find out if they're convicted of the felony or not. But I mean, it's think about the whole process of what they had to do to get to this point. I mean, we'll see. We'll see, dude. But uh, yeah, that's everything I got, bro. That was uh, that was fun. Plan on meeting next Friday, one thirty. Yeah. So yeah, let's do it. I look forward to this every week. Um, obviously, some weeks we're going to probably have juicier stuff to talk about. But um, 
think it's good just getting together and shooting the shit. Strapping on, dude. Absolutely. I love that, dude. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here with us watching this. Uh, appreciate your time. David, thank you for being here, brother. We will catch you guys next week. Adios.